the one thing good about our God is since we established our relationship with Him as our Father. Remember the way Jesus was referred to in the Old Testament is, is, is a counselor. And one of them is also a father. The everlasting father. That's what he was referred to as. And uh, I want everybody to pay attention to this. Because you need to have this in your system. Today, before you leave this room. In the name of the almighty. Jesus Christ. Your brain will be healed. And none of you will be worrying again. And I will define some things for you. Pastor, how do I know when I'm starting to worry? Because you already said it and Jesus already said it clearly. That it's actually sin to worry. Again, it's sin. How could it be a blessing if it's a sin? And why would Jesus not want us to worry? These are the things we really need to ask ourselves as Christians. We worry, we, we worry about everything. Especially if you were born, like some people are saying, I'm so sorry, I can't do it, Pastor, because I, I was born from, from kickoff. I was a worry wart. That's not true. When you were a baby, you didn't worry. You acquired that. You got used to it. You developed it in your system. It's something that needs to be purged out of us. Same thing with the spirit of a rebellion. We just want to go against the rules all the time. We couldn't even understand why. For some strange reason, we can't. And yet those rules were set to preserve us, to help us, to guide us, to teach us, to lead us. And here we are refusing it. And then we end up confused and everything. Like, duh, and all these things. And we wonder why we are duh. It's because we're not doing what God is asking. Look at your neighbor right now and tell them, today you're going to receive good news. Okay, I have good news for you. We're going to receive good news today. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 to 32, if we may look at it. Thank you, Christina. That was fast. Uh, it says there, so don't, guys, please pay attention to the word. Pay attention to the word. In the olden times when the word is being read, everybody stands up. As a sign of respect to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Our Majesty King. Our Lord Jesus. Everybody should stand up normally. And then they will read the word. So I didn't, I didn't even ask you to stand up. But give me your standing attention. Right here. So don't worry about these things. Saying what will we eat? What will we drink? What will be where? And if I may add something to that even, is what's going to happen tomorrow? Especially the most common thing is, where will I get the money to pay my bills? Hmm? Now, Jesus addressed that issue 2,000 years ago. Why are we still in it? That's why we have to study this today. From now on, we will stop it. If you want to be pleasant before God, if you want God as your delightful and delighted king, looking at you and delighting in you, do this. Verse 32, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, not Christians, not 
Some of us would even worry about our examinations, our tests. Or if we have a, a, a court case. I've experienced having a court case. And I was dragged into it. It wasn't funny. But I remember when I had to stand there, I had no lawyer beside me. Because at that time, I couldn't afford it. And I was in a foreign land. Stripped of all my abilities and my power. The usual power that I have. Power to buy attorneys. Power to do this. Power to do everything. When I was wallowing in it in Europe. But all of a sudden, my life was disciplined. Full of discipline. And in front of it, as though it wasn't enough. In front of it. In front of me. A lawsuit. None other than a member of the family. Now, don't worry. It's not my immediate family. So anyway, I remember that time waking up at five in the morning. And at five in the morning, my phone rang. So I woke up at the right time. The case wasn't starting until nine in the, in the morning. But I was already up at five. And the phone rang. And who was on the other line but the bishop saying to me, Today, pastor, nobody holds the absolute truth except God. And I said, I agree with you, pastor. That's why I don't worry. I said, Today, the Lord will show the whole world who is the innocent one. I felt like saying, <laughs> you're talking about me, right? you know. I felt like saying that, but I, in fairness to all, I even said, God, if I am guilty, I said, then judge me. And that's how honest I was. But it was the most painful thing I told him. But I cannot worry. Because he already told me. I don't want you to. Look at your neighbor right now and say, God, Jesus doesn't really want you to worry. Tell them right now, he doesn't want you to worry. Okay. You want hypertension? Worry. Okay. Uh, what else? Do you want heart problems? Worry. You want restless nights? Worry. I recommend you embrace worry. You want a long face? Worry. And yet, Jesus, the almighty Savior we have, looking at us and saying, I don't want you to worry. Look at your neighbor and tell them again, Jesus doesn't want you to worry. Tell them right now, let them know. That's a sin if you're worrying. Stop worrying. Tell them right now. They, don't, they just look dull right now, but in actual fact, they really need this. You're not a dull case in the eyes of God. You're a serious case. And he's taking you very seriously. He loves you. Okay? He doesn't even treat you the way you treat yourself. He doesn't do that. He loves you more than you love yourself. And he is the almighty, the creator of the universe, saying to you, I got your back, baby. I got your front, I got your sides, I got you all over. I got you. Look at your neighbor and say, he got you. He's got, oh, jeez. Let's discuss this seriously. These things dominate the thoughts of people who do not have God. But your heavenly father already knows. Hallelujah. Say it with me. Oh, thank you, Lord God. You're, Lord, you're serious? No, not some. You might know some only. Huh? You're still negotiating, aren't you? So you could worry about some things as well? Give him only some? Okay, Lord, 50-50. I've done that with God before. 50-50. I've done it. I've been there done that 
That's why I'm admonishing all of you to snap out of it. Uh, can we ask everyone to just settle down, please? So you can focus. Your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. When I asked God about this last night, I said, Lord, what am I going to say to them so they will snap out of it? God said, you tell them this, Bobby. And I'm telling you right now. Touch your hair right now. Touch your hair. Touch your hair. Do you know the Lord knows exactly the number of hairs you have on your head? Do you know? That's how detailed he is. Rena, he knows exactly how many hair you lost since this morning. And how many you have gained as well. Okay? He knows. That's how detailed he is. You still doubt that God who knows how many hairs you have in your hair? Oh, I'm sorry, hair. On your head. You still doubt him? He cares about the number of hairs. Can you imagine that? Jerry, he cares. Hallelujah. And yet we still worry. Like it's so productive. Look at your neighbor and say, to worry is non-productive. Stop wasting your life. Stop wasting your time. Because it is important to God. What you indulge yourself in. Add to the fact that God lives within us. He's in you. And sometimes the reason why you The reason why you behave the way you behave is because you are not paying a conscious attention. God pays attention to His promises. He promised you, I don't want you to worry. He promised, He said, I know all your needs. He promised you. So why even worry? And some people, I've encountered so many of them this week. They worry about their bodies. Will they ever be healed? Will they ever get better? And my only answer to them is, will Jesus ever be the healer? Because if he is, then there's nothing to worry about your body. He owns that body. Why do I know? Because this is what God said. Your body. Say it with me. My body. Say it again. My body. And again. My body. For the last time. My body. Is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if you think it's a cheapy, cheapy thing. Just in case. Do you know who the Holy Spirit is? The one who lives in you is the same Holy Spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead. Beat that. And you know why he put it there? To seal you with his ownership. That means only one thing and one thing alone. Baby, you belong to me. He's the only one that would say to you, baby, that is not malicious. And he gave it to you and to me when we did not deserve it. So don't think for a second, oh, you know, I'm so good. That's why Jesus loves me. There's nothing good in us apart from Jesus. Ah, oh, you don't believe me. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's nothing good about us apart from Jesus. That's why when Christians, and Christians misbehave, trust me. I'm capable of misbehaving. Oh, you don't know me when I'm naughty. Oh, hallelujah. I need God when I'm naughty. Meaning to say, guys, apart from Jesus, I'm naughty. Now you know why I have to be Jesus 24-7.
So I will not be naughty 24-7. I disconnect just a little bit. Hmm. I look at myself and that, that's not Pastor Bobby I know. Nah. No. Jeez. I wonder what it'd be like if God will put a television on top of our head to show everyone what we're thinking. Hmm? I want to create the ugliest face when I was saying that to you. Except what can we do? This is what God created. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Thank you, Jesus. For how can we say you trust him and then worry obsessively about your health, about your kids, about your job, about your finances, about everything? And then you say you trust him? Hmm. You're not confusing God. You're confusing yourself. When you do this, when we do this, this is not good for us. Concern is one thing, guys. Write that word, concern. Concern is one thing. Okay? They, they come. They come. And so when I say problems, for example, something is problematic. Problems come. But don't forget, problems go. And so you cannot use that as the final authority in your life. Concern is one thing, but worry is an upfront. Write that down. A-F-F-R-O-N-T. That's an insult to God. To the God who has never let you down. And we even sing the show, you never gonna let, never gonna let me down. And yet we don't trust him fully. Yet we worry. I'm bombarding you with this so that when we leave the doors today, we're 100% worry free. I want the whole church. Give God the glory for that church. Boom. Make it a thundering one and blast the eardrums of Satan because we're not going to listen to him. In Philippians 4, <laughs> I'm so impressed. Thank you, Jesus. 6 to 7. It says, Don't worry about anything. The, the, oh, shh, shh. What, Pastor? Don't worry about anything. No, no pa you're serious, Pastor? Was I serious or the word is serious? Let's read it again in case we made a mistake. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. You know, you have very few choices here. Pray or worry? How does that sound to you? So what I do now as a, as a conscious practice, every time I encounter a challenge or problem, so-called problem, it's not mine immediately. I tell God, it doesn't matter what it is. It says clearly, anything. What's the meaning of anything? Look at your neighbor and say, anything. Of course it's anything. Instead of worrying, I want you to pray for everything. And tell God what you need. Be honest about it, okay? All right? You say, I'll give you an example. I would say, you know, Lord, I've been longing to, to go. Ladies, you're going to love this. Lord, I've been longing to go shopping. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, John. No, okay, Lord, not just for me, but for the church too, Okay? Good excuse, ladies, isn't it? Say so, hallelujah. So I, I would like to go shopping for my friends too, God. For the young girls, they say, hey, so we can have fun, you know what I mean, type of thing. And the word of God says, all you have to do is tell him. 
You want it. You want it. Okay? But I will always remember when my children, how many have children here? Let me see your hands. Guys, this is going to be, this sounds familiar. You know the word that they use, want? I want, I want, I want. So I developed my own rule in the house. I want never gets. Okay? So I said, but if you need anything, I will provide. But want? We'll talk about it. The answer is yes, sure, fine. But you have to wait. Tell God what you need. Did you see that? It didn't say, tell God what you want. And I correct myself, okay? <laughs> There's a big difference between need and want, okay? Hallelujah. And thank Him for all He has done. Again, all. No, no I wasn't asking to say, I'm just saying, oh. Then you will experience, oh, glory, 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 glory. And then if you would do that, you will experience. Experience the peace that surpasses all human understanding, which shall garrison your heart and your mind so that it will be fixed on Christ rather than circumstances and people. If there are people who are anointed persecutors in your life, give them to Jesus. And if possible, if you cannot say anything good about them, shut your trap, your mouth, okay? That's a trap. Because the more you curse them, the worse they will be. That's a promise. So, you know when parents sometimes would get so frustrated? I understand. I was once, I've been a parent. When you get so frustrated and you will say things that you didn't want to say, like you will never amount to anything, you never mind, okay? You hallelujah, bless child that you are. Then you will experience God's peace. Did you all hear me? You will experience what? God's peace. What will you experience? God's peace. And what will you experience again? God's peace. If you have no peace, that means you're worrying. Something is wrong with you. Or you haven't prayed. For what you're thinking and concerning yourself unnecessarily about. So I said to myself, Lord, what, what's the difference between concern and worry? God said, concern is when you see the problem. Hmm? When you see it. What do you do with it? Attitude check. I love the Tuesday group. And they say, attitude check? Praise the Lord. They will all say, okay? So because it's really true. You check your attitude, you will find, you know what? Am I behaving the way Jesus would like me to handle this? Look at your neighbor right now and say this. From now on, handle things with majesty. I love it when... When you look, you look at the royal family, they, they do it with majesty all the time. When they, hum, when they handle troubles, <laughs> I was laughing at it. When they did the uh, shutdown, what do you call that thing? Uh, um, when, they do the, when they did the lockdown in, in England first, the very first Sunday of that week, the Queen of England, Address the whole nation. She only did it once. And you would think, listening to her, that what we are experiencing is just a temporary advertisement. That right after this, we're going to have a party. Guys, in actual fact, that's what Jesus is doing for you and for me. We're going to have a party. Look at your neighbor and say, don't worry. After this, we're going to have a party. Thank you, Jesus. All right? Now, all of a sudden, especially the young people should be alive, okay? Then you will experience God's peace. The moment you have prayed, you will have a party. 
God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. All of a sudden, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for anointing this. All of a sudden, your natural head transforms into supernatural. All of a sudden, um, the reason why God doesn't panic is because he has a bigger picture. All of a sudden, you will hear God inviting you to see the bigger picture of your whole situation. And you see, this is what's happening, okay? The reason why you're a loser in the area of love is because you're worshiping your need rather than the one who can provide for you. And I know that hit the bullseye. far exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. That's what's going to happen to us. Suddenly, you cannot recognize yourself anymore. Hallelujah. In Matthew 6.34, I'm just giving you all the, if, if you like, connected scriptures or relative scriptures for this. It says, there you go again. So don't worry about tomorrow. How many are worried about your future? Sometimes I listen to the Christians. Listen to this. Shh. I listen to the Christians. And I really listen to them. And this is what they will say. Oh my gosh, you know what, Pastor? May Jesus come soon. And I say, why? He will. And, and he said, no, no, I'm, I'm serious, Pastor, because I'm worried about my children. What will be, what kind of a future they will have? Their future is God. Don't behave like God doesn't own them. And that's a direct rebuke to you. And that's a direct rebuke to me too. Because look, you are all my kids. Can you imagine if I will worry for every single one of you? What's going to happen to me? I know what I'm talking about. And we live by example. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Look at your neighbor and say, you've got more than enough, okay? Tell them right now, you've got more than enough now, so that's okay. But, but Pastor, my problem is I'm not even done with today's worries and already the others are coming. And I said, so what? Don't you remember what Jesus said about that? He said, there is no temptation, trial. Or test that will come your way that he hasn't already provided a way out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. A way out. Look at your neighbor and say, way out. Way out. It's, it, guys, it's solved. It's a done deal. And if you're not happy with that, you are super ungrateful. Which most people have. Why do I know that? Can you imagine God led the people out of Egypt? And the reason why he is taking them with him through the wilderness is to train them to become like him so that when they reach the promised land, they will not corrupt and destroy the promised land. It's like the Christians today. This is our wilderness. But when we get to heaven, it's the promised land. You don't behave well here. You will not be able to behave properly when you are in heaven. And that's your future. For millions and trillions of years, we shall continue. And the world is not even 10,000 years old. Hallelujah. 
I'm talking about mankind. I want everyone to understand that. I want you to understand that. That he's got all of us covered in this life. Um, Christina, I don't know if you're able to plug again the title of this message that I have today. Did you see this? Look at your neighbor and say, hey. Yay. Yippee, yippee. Yeah. God will what? Take care of you. You know, with women, when, when a man is, you know, the dream of her life, and she's just waiting for that moment when the man would say, baby, I will take care of you for the rest of my life. Will you marry me? Oh, my gosh. It didn't happen yet. And already you think it's happening. She releases her faith. What do you say, baby? And then, and then uh, the, guy, the, the baby would say, my own dad didn't even say that to me. And I'm saying it to me. <laughs> Couldn't say yes fast enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Will you marry me? But can you imagine, guys? Jesus married us. Jesus proposed to us a long, long time ago. And he said, I want you to be my bride, babe. And you know the best thing about Jesus? He's the best one. You can't find anybody better than him. People tried. No parents. No lovers. No children. Is even up the scratch with God's love. With God's proposal when he gave this to you. When he looked at you, he said, will you marry me? And you said, yeah. And then you became born again. Sorry. And that's the same God. That's the same God who hasn't changed his mind. Maybe your lovers aren't lovers. I'm sorry. Why did I say that? Maybe uh, your spouse, your boyfriend or your girlfriend already changed their minds, but Jesus didn't. He remains the same. He remains the same. And you know what? Even if your spouse will look at you and say, I will never leave you. I'm darling, I will never forget. But if they died, they left you. The thing with Jesus is he doesn't leave you. Now get somebody like that if you want to love her. This is why I'm saying to you guys, Jesus loves us more than we love ourselves. Because when you take thought, when you take thought, when you worry, you try to take control. And we don't like it when we are not in control of our lives, right? Ah. To the controlling ones in this room, give up. That's a command. I'm not requesting you. Give up. Give the control button to Jesus. So you can have peace. So you can have rest. And I know you're listening to me, even if you're pretending you're not. And I know you heard me clearly. And when that happens, peace goes out of the window when you are in control of your life. When you're controlling your life, peace leaves. Because you cannot have two masters at the same time. You'll serve one and hate the other.
worry is like a snowball. It starts small. Did you notice that? And as you keep rolling it forward, it becomes big enough to bury you. You're no longer normal. You're no longer functional when you're worried. Especially when it consumed you already. Especially when it lasts longer than one day. Promise me one thing from now on. You will not even, even if you get tempted, you will not take worry with you to bed. Because that's like sleeping with the enemy. An enemy who will steal, who will kill, and who will destroy. Sounds attractive? Because I know some people are in love with bad boys, bad girls. Don't bat me. You don't know what bad is until you're dead. I know you heard me. Uh, parents, I will get my commission see, from you in a moment. Okay, so hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All that's necessary to keep a stationary train. I want you to know this. Take this to heart. Because I, I, I looked at it and I said, OMG. <laughs> I said, this is the most absolute truth. All that takes necessary to keep a station, stationary train from moving forward are two six-inch blocks of wood. That's all it takes. Six inches blocks of wood. How many are engineers here? Okay, one, anybody else? You know what I am saying is true. That's all it takes. But once it builds up power and it smashes against something, I'd like you to know this is tried and tested and it happened, I think, in New York one time. It is capable of crashing through a six foot thick wall. That's how powerful it is. So stop the worry train, worry train. Look at your neighbor and say, never ever ride the worry train. Tell them right now, because it's going to smash against something. Before it leaves the station, God says, my grace. Say it with me, God's grace. Say it again, God's grace. Say it again, God's grace. My unmerited favor is sufficient for you. Meaning to say, be content with what I am giving you, baby. Uh, that's in uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But, we said, but he said to me, my grace, he spoke to Paul. Because Paul was going through uh, annoying trials. How many have been through annoying trials? Hallelujah. Uh, by that, I meant repetitive. Yeah? Repetitive, like, I know this. Deja vu. I've experienced this before. We've been here before. But why is it still here? Hmm. Glory to God. And so he asked God, he said, take this. Uh, mm. He said, take this pain, this annoying pain, away from me. And Jesus said, this is when he answered, he said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast of all the, oh, sorry, all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. He said, my grace is sufficient for you.
I'm going to ask you. How many of you had been experiencing financial pinch, crunch, or whatever? How many of you have been experiencing that? Okay. How many of you, you wish I have, you have several million dollars in your account, so you don't have to, uh, to think about, you know, but just say pay, 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 pay. And I, I, shh, I was in that trap. And I kept looking at God and I said, why can't you just give me, because I've tasted what it is to have so much, and I really mean so much. That I don't even think about the bills. I was glad to see all the bills. And God spoke to me and he said, it hasn't changed. Because what you have, Bobby, is unlimited. It's just that you got your eyes so trained to look at the physical things. And God said, but what I want you to do. Listen to this. He said, but what I want you to do is just like the Israelites, they... All they have to do every day, every day, is to go out and pick up the food. They didn't even work for it. No planting, no harvest. Boom, food. Kaboom. Instantaneous. Mana, as it were. Meaning to say, what is it? Food. Okay. And God provided that for them 40 years. Tell me that's not a good God. Three million people. And don't, no, 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 no health insurance. Everybody perfectly well. And God provided water so that they won't stink in the middle of the desert. God provided everything. And shh, this is what he said to me. I was training my people. To trust me every day for their provision. If I gave them mountains of provision of mana, they will not need me. Because people obviously are propelled by their needs. And God is removing that from our system. And this is what he said to me. Why do you resent when you're trusting me every day? God said, do I resent it when I bless you? I said, no. I don't resent it. I, I jump up and down. I'm really delighted. You know what I mean? And God said, then why do you resent it if you have to trust me every day? God said, shh. God said, it gives me pleasure. You're going to take away my pleasure? Then how come I don't take away your pleasure? Let's play it fairly with God. Trust Him daily. Because it gives Him pleasure. So let's go back again to the prayer. You know, problems and everything. When they come, guys, roll it over to Jesus every day and say, I don't have a, until you get desensitized by the world. I will say that again. Until you get desensitized from what you are used to. Until you die to your flesh so that you will start living for God. It's true. Argued from here to eternity. I know where I'm standing is true. I know where we are all standing is true. God will give you only what you need for today. Write that down. God will give me. Write it down. God will give me. Only what I need. I didn't say want necessarily. But what I need for today. And that way... I have to keep trusting him for tomorrow. That way, I have to keep trusting him for tomorrow. Do uh, you know the advertisements that you see on YouTube? How many are checking your YouTube? And don't lie to me. Just raise your hands, okay? 
I just want to see. Okay, very good. I am a, there are good stuff in YouTube, okay? I've learned so many other things in YouTube, and thank God for the YouTube. But the rest of the things, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But anyway, in, in this YouTube thing, did you notice this advertisement saying, uh, when lockdown happens, when all the supermarkets would close, you need to buy this stuff that will last you for 25 years with all the delicious food. My next question to that is, where on earth will I store them? And then in most cases, where will I get the money from to buy those things? Well, I'll tell you what. God has it for you. So you don't have to store. Do you know that some of the Israelites, like some Christians... They tried to store for more than one day of their consumption of the manna. And the following day, it was full of worms. I'll be honest with you. If you're relying on your abundance that you see in your bank account, in your house, or God knows where else, they are the weakest sources. With God, it's always fresh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. It's always fresh. Shh. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. And His mercies never come to an end. They are fresh every morning because great is his faithfulness because he's a good good God he's your daddy he's your everything there you go can we so all say it together amen <laughs> it's true whether you believe that or not it's true it's what God has promised us I'm about to land the plane okay in John 10 Three to four. The Bible tells us Jesus is the good shepherd. How many believe that? Uh, not all, not everyone raised their hands. How many believe that Jesus is a good shepherd? I do, because I really do, guys, okay? And it's my only time to tell Jesus, I believe, yeah? That's why I was asking you to make sure that you're not sleeping. Okay, may I ask kindly again? How many believe that Jesus is a good shepherd? Please raise your hands, okay? If you don't, that's your problem. That's why you have a problem. That's why you look like you look. So anyway, gatekeeper opens the gate for him. And the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name. So God knows your name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. And that's wonderful. He's already gone ahead of us to arrange everything. So don't even tell God how to be God. How many of you have done that? Don't raise your hands, okay? Knowing that should help you face tomorrow. Confident that God will take care of you. And I end. I gave you as much as I could. Okay? How many enjoyed the message today? Thank you, Jesus. I want you all to stand up. I want you all to stand up. And I don't want anybody worried ever again. Okay? Okay? I feel like creating a martial law. I would put something like, worries not of God. Warriors not children of God. I feel like doing that, seriously. Because God said, you're like an unbeliever when you worry. And there is no reason to worry because God has already provided. Why would you worry when God has already promised you? And that he will provide for you. 
Why? So you will look dramatic. So everybody will think you are, be- you, or you are, oh, oh. You, you want pity? Make sure it's not drama. Make sure it's Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, enough with the drama. Let's have Jesus, okay? Let's have Jesus. And that's all. That's all I'm asking. No more drama. Let's have Jesus. Glory to God. How many are going to be happy that way? We will stop with all our dramas in this life, yeah? Enough with the dramas and no more complaining from now on, rejoicing, yeah? Because the Word of God says, the joy of the Lord who are rejoicing will be their strength. Hallelujah. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They're going to be powerful. They're going to be powerful. If you want the enemy to be afraid of you, give him a reason. And if you want the enemy to maltreat you, keep entertaining him. Is that clear? We all get it. Lift your hands right now before the Father. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. Lord, I delivered it. We are your We are yours. And I know that you would like and you would love to see all of us maturing. Thank you for this mature message today. That we will no longer behave like babies. That we stop completely being young Christians. And this time, be in total peace. Just like what Jesus said, not as the world gives it, but as you expect spectacularly, miraculously provided. Allow us to wallow in it, Lord, we pray. This is our moment, God. And we want you to know we're taking it seriously. We are the people of your flock. We hear your voice. We don't just hear it. Our resolve today is we will follow it. I don't even have to say to myself, Lord, where is God? Where is He? The Word of God says don't run to to your right or to your left. Thank you, Jesus. Don't do any of those things. But look up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Because as Jesus, I remember, would always say it to the people, be it done according to your faith. Whatever you trust me with is what's going to happen, and that's the final thing. No more arguments. And God is putting a period right there. When Jesus screamed on top of his head, when he won the final victory, he said, it is finished. How many believe that? How can Jesus say it is finished and people are still continuing? Church, in the name of Jesus, not the IFGs Christians. We are people and Christians and believers of highest caliber. And that's what we want to happen, Father, for the whole world to see. But it's not going to happen, Lord, until we trust you. Put that hands again. Put it up again and say, Lord, until we trust you. I am now surrendering that worry wart spirit to you. And I am trusting you unequivocally 100%. And if in case, Lord, my mind is trying to bother me, 
I'm not going to give into it. I'm not surrendering to my mind. I'm surrendering to the spirit of the living God who lives in me. After all, weren't you the one who said, your grace, which is the spirit, is sufficient for me. And in case there will be weaknesses, you said, your weaknesses will turn into strength, into power. Because Satan knows all he could do about you is bow down to you, surrender. And you can put your foot or your feet on his head. And if you want at the same time, you can crush it. Hallelujah. Because you have the power now. It's been given to you. That's what Jesus said, I will until I make your enemy your footstool and Jesus already did it for us what are we doing are we doing it are we agreeing with Jesus because in in the kingdom of God it's all or nothing are you for God or are you against God make a final decision and today you're doing that my final decision, Father, say it with me, my final decision. My final decision. I don't care what my brain says. My final decision is to surrender to you. The one who won it all for me. Who is the overall sufficient. And who lives in me. Who will carefully and lovingly guide me, teach me and lead me unto all truth. Because you're not a man that you should lie nor a son of man that you should repent. But as you send forth your word, it will accomplish every single thing that you have put your purpose into and that which will always please you. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Everyone said, Amen and Amen. God bless you. Okay.